You're listening to the FanVestor Podcast. If you're looking to raise your family with intention, gain financial independence, and live a life of true freedom, you're in the right place. Join us as we explore together how to create thriving families, because strong families are the cornerstone for a world at peace. Welcome to another episode of the FanVestor Podcast. I'm your host, Sun Marie Burns. And I'm your co-host, Sunny Burns. And today we are going to delve into a different area. We were reflecting recently and we thought about how most of our episodes re- revolve around per, uh, some topic, <laughs> some topic, usually professional or career based uh, investment related, but we don't jump too much into our personal lives. And we figured perhaps our listeners would like to know a little bit more about who we are. So, so this is the Sunny Burns story. And who? we're going to do one with Sun Marie <laughs> in a little bit. Right. But uh, I'm going to go first. So we're going to explore who is Sunny Burns and what is his life story. Right. So I have a mommy and a daddy. I am one of four. I am the second, second eldest. Uh, two boys, two girls. Um, so that's also kind of why I'm thinking we should have four kiddos too. I think that's the plan right now. Um, okay, let me read you my bio. Should I read it my bio? Okay, I'm going to read you my bio. So my bio is, Sonny Burns is 30 and works full-time as a project engineer for the Department of Defense. He is happily married with three amazing kids. Sonny is founder of FanVestor.com, a blog and podcast where he shares about financial independence and creating strong families. Together with his wife, they own three rental properties in the New York City area, 11 units total that are worth $2 million and bring in over 200,000 annual gross rents. A lot of people get confused with what that $2 million means. It means those, those uh, three properties that we own are worth up to $2 million um, you know, if we sold them, but we have a bunch of you know, mortgages on them, so it's not like we are two mi- by millionaires. Do, it's not like we have $2 million in the, in sitting the in the bank and <laughs> right. no, n- no idea what to do. It's right. not like that at all. Anyway, continuing <laughs> on with the bio. They also run a successful Airbnb Turo rental car. That's still going quite strong, by the way. I should do an update episode on that. And Amazon FBA business. That has not been going as well, but I still get a lot of Amazon referral income. So anyway, I, I should do an update on that too. With their frugal lifestyle, they are now 107% financially independent. He enjoys the simpler things in life, like listening to books, running, biking, ultimate frisbee, volleyball, and going camping. I love how you wrote a bio about yourself and you read your own <laughs> bio. About I should have had you read the bio. <laughs> yes, you should have. I was okay. like, this is so awkward. <laughs> I guess it was kind of awkward. I thought it was enjoyable. I'm sure the audience enjoyed it. Okay. From me... third person, Sonny Burns is now going to interview himself. <laughs> so let Sonny Burns share his life purpose. My life purpose is to be a role model with a sound body, no addictions, financial independence, and a strong, loving family that can inspire and empower others to invest in their family. I love that. I love your life purpose statement. Um, I love how well thought out it is. And just all the areas you, you hit in that topic are so you and so our family and i love that you have this clarity you know creating a life purpose can be a really great thing to do and i don't have one quite as inspired as sunny so i just like to tag along and be like that's mine too right. <laughs> well let's dive into a little bit so sound body why is that important to me to me it's important because i always want to be able to you know when i was growing up my dad you know he played football when he was younger he broke his knee and you know once he got older he just couldn't run and he was an, a very athletic person you know he did marathons and things but at a certain age he just couldn't keep up with his knee and um you know so it would have been great to grow up playing sports with him but that just didn't happen And for me, I always want to have an able body that can do anything. You know, if I see a mountain I want to climb, I want to always be able to climb it. I don't want to have any physical limitations that are impeding me from doing something I want to do. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's very important that I stay healthy, you know, I stay fit, and that I stay strong, strong enough to do, you know, keep up with the kids. My goal, one of my life goals is to, you know, maintain uh, be as fast as my kids until they're 16 years old. Once they're 16, they can surpass me. But until that point, I want to be able to keep up with them. And, you know, right now I'm coaching T-ball. Um, so I'm just, you know, I'm very involved. And I feel like to be as involved as I want to be, I need a sound body. And, you know, that t- doesn't just happen overnight. It takes a lot of 
discipline and a lot of investment into it. And it's something that Sonny does all the time. He invests into his health, he invests into his nutrition and his fitness, and he works at it daily. Right. And it it's inspiring to me because I'm not quite as diligent as he is on that, but it is something that I would like to aspire to be more in that way. Um, you know, I really think that they say age is just a number. You know, it's all about how you care for your physical self. You know, you don't have to physically grow old and feeble if you maintain a certain level of fitness and health and eat the right things and take care of yourself. You know, and that kind of was an eye-opening thing for me that, oh, you know, just because you're a certain age doesn't mean you have to be feeble. You know, you can actually do something about it. Right. And that's something that Sonny very actively works at. Right. Yeah. Today I got up, uh, you know, 7 a.m., went for a run. It was raining out. But, you know, I've made it a, a, a life habit that, you know, every I run at least two days a week. Um, and that's been ongoing for the last, last, like, 10 plus 15 years. And it isn't even just running. You come back from your run and then you have your workout yeah, circuit. I, and it's not, it's not a lot, but it's enough for me to maintain what I want to maintain. And it's just sit-ups. Um, sometimes push-ups and definitely pull-ups. Right. So it's really the running and the pull-ups and you know some a little other things going on. Yeah. And that's enough. That's enough for me. And I'm only running about you know between t- sometimes as much as like six miles, but usually it's really just like two three miles. That's all I'm running. Right. Uh, next part of the goal: no addictions. This is huge to me. Um, you know, I don't want to be, you know, tied to anything. I don't want to need enhancers so uh, things i'm thinking about you know i don't drink coffee Mm -hmm. i do do tea every once in a while but it's not an addiction i'd say um you know i don't drink alcohol i don't need anything to improve my my mood my morale um um you know the sexual integrity i've i want to talk more about that in a future episode i don't think i should talk about it now should i no we'll save it for another one no so i want you know complete freedom from any any um any vices really um that's a huge objective in my life especially you know as a time you know for a long time i was a, um in youth ministry as a group leader and you know i need to be able to look at my kids and be that role model you know that's part of my life purpose statement be that role model to them and now i feel like with the podcast you know i know there's a lot of young people listening to this podcast i want to be a role model to them too you know to show them you know we've definitely achieved a good level of success and we've done it by being disciplined, by you know having endurance and going through struggles, working through them, uh, but doing it with integrity and doing it, um, you know, staying true to who we wanted to be without sacrificing that. Um, so I, I hope to be that role model. You know, that's part of my life purpose, and I hope I'm, I'm doing that. Um, right, and I think that you know that's that's it's huge. You know, there's so many great people throughout history and throughout time who have done incredible things but they've had like a few vices a few things that have been their their like pitfall you know you read those stories over and over again and every time you read it you're like god they're such an amazing person why'd they have to have that bad habit why'd they have to cheat on their wife or why'd they have to you know yeah fall into drinking and alcoholism or some other kind of vice that's self-destructive you know so uh, our aim is to be people who can still achieve great things with our life and be an inspiration without having to have that that kind of negative baggage to carry right. along with us. You know, no one's perfect, but we can certainly try to uh, stay on the the straight and narrow path whenever possible, you know, and, and Sunny works really hard at that. And that is the reason, you know, a lot of people ask us, why don't you drink coffee? That's just so weird. Honestly, that's the reason because we don't want to be addicted to a caffeinated drink that we need every morning to boost our mood and get our day going. We want to be able to wake up and start our day just as the plain old human beings that we are, you know? Right. I feel like so many people are just not able to function or they're if like, they don't oh, have their coffee. can't co- start my day. I didn't have my coffee yet. Or their day is ruined and they can't, <laughs> yeah, function. like. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, the same goes with energy drinks, all that stuff, like. Um, you know, are, are they bad for you? Well, n- you know, no, they're not the worst things in the world for you, but do you need them? Are you dependent on them? And those are the things we're trying to watch for. Right. Full disclosure, 
I love my chocolate a little too much. And that's something that I am working on diligently to try to like eat a little less of because I notice that it's a bit of a, a, a crutch for me, you know, like, ah, oh, I need a bar of chocolate, you know, and he's constantly reminding me, hey, you know, it's not about the chocolate bar that I don't have a problem that you're eating a chocolate bar. I just have a problem about why are you eating it? Are you eating it for, for, you know, boosting your mood for a hard day? Or are you, you know, in, able to control those emotions and just enjoy it for a snack now and then? So it's just really a great mental habit to work on, you know, just trying to be the best version of yourself. Right. Yeah, and there's financial independence in there. I'm not going to go into that because you guys are all well aware about the financial independence. But maybe you can go into why you felt that was important to be in your life. Like, I, sure. I honestly, I had no idea what financial independence was before I met you. I'd never even heard the term. Right. Yeah, so I guess the financial independence is just, you know, I feel like once you're financially independent, your your opportunities are, you know, open up so much more. And, you know, the impact you can have in this world, I feel like, is so much more drastic. You know, you're no longer working a nine to five, fulfilling someone else's dream. You are fulfilling your own dream. You are not tied to any sort of hourly income making. Um, so that's why financial independence was so important to me. You know, I have dreams. I have goals. And to achieve those, you know, I have to spend a lot of hours uh, working towards that. And part of the podcast is is part of those dreams. You know, it's working towards my life purpose, which is, you know, putting out these podcasts, which can hopefully inspire and empower others to ultimately invest in their families. And, you know, also in the, in the podcast intro, you know, we're talking about uh, creating a world at peace. Because I really feel like when if people can invest in their families, you know, um, you know, I feel like we invest a lot into our families. I feel like we're making great kids. And I feel like, you know, when you when we can all do that, the world will be peaceful. Right. Having a strong mom and dad in, in our kids lives. I feel like, um, you know, it almost guarantees them to be good people. I won't say I won't say that, but I'd say it's, you know, 90 percent of the way there. That's my personal belief. Um, and that's why that's part of my life purpose statement and why it's so important. And I think why finances are so important to consider um, when when trying to create a, a good, strong family dynamic is how a lot of families are controlled by this fear, mm. this fear factor that is ultimately driven by the need for money, not enough money. You know, so, you, you know, dad can't spend time with the kids because he's got to work more hours because he needs more money right. because he needs to pay those bills and if he doesn't pay those bills you won't have a home and what will we do then and there's just so much fear there perhaps he's trapped in a job that he absolutely hates right. and he gets depressed about it but he feels he can't leave it because he has to make that money right if you can put yourself into a situation where you aren't a slave to your career but that you actually choose to be in that job and doing what you're doing the job becomes more fulfilling to you as a person you get joy from doing it you feel uplifted in your life and the fear isn't there anymore and you can share that with your kids and they can see a really happy thriving well-adjusted parent you know who's who's living a life that's fulfilling to them right. and they aren't struggling right. with it because there are options to also pursue your dreams and not make any money, but there, then you always live with a constant pain of how do I afford life? And there's a lot of insecurity that comes from and that. And aggravation, especially within marriage. You know, money is the top, one of the top reasons for divorce right. um, and for good reason. And, you know, we've even shared amongst ourselves, you know, our families growing up weren't rich. They, they, they were poor and we had financial struggles. Your family did, my family did. And just seeing that, that pain and that agony mm. of like, oh man, I want to do this, but can we afford it? You right. know, and just just wanting to be able to live the life that you truly want without that fear and that nervousness. I mean, how much of a blessing is that? So that's you know what we what we've been working on. Right. Sunny really why he has that in his life purpose is to try to create this like family dynamic where you don't have that fear driven by this monetary reason right 
Yeah, I feel like I grew up in a... So talking about money, you know, money is what in, in our modern day, you know, enables our shelter, our food, and our safety, uh, essentially. And, you know, that those are our human needs, you know, back in the Stone Age, they were, they were going for that too. They did it in different ways, but, you know, in today's modern age, money enables that. Um, so when you can, you know, find a way to passively accomplish those needs by being financially independent, then you, you don't have to worry about those those uh, three things. And you can start worrying about greater, greater uh, achievements, you know, things that are going to bring you ultimate happiness. Right. And so that's why it's important. And I feel like I did grow up in a very loving family um, that I wanted to imitate. Um, I was very happy and uh, still am very happy with the family I was raised in. And a lot of what we do, we, I model off of that. Um, but, you know, there was that financial element. You know, my, my mom told me recently that her food budget a month for when me and my, and my brother were little kids was $40 a month. And I'm like, how do you survive on $40 a month? And apparently it was a lot of Kraft mac and cheese because that was like the cheapest thing she could buy um, in, in our little basement apartment. But, um, but yeah, just, just interesting where we came from. And, you know, my dad got better and better jobs as we, as we grew up. Um, but, and, and they always, you know, my mom's Japanese. Oh, that's another thing. I'm half Japanese, half uh, like a smorgasbord of European, Italian, Greek, um, Irish. Uh, anyway, um, where were they going? In the $40 budget. And... <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, you know, my parents could afford... We went to Japan many times uh, when I was younger. But, you know, they saved a lot for that. And that was our big expenditure. You know, we never went to Disney World or anything like that. But we would go to Japan like once every two or three years when we were younger. Uh, so that was a really cool experience. Um, so it wasn't like we were dirt poor or anything. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, you know, money was definitely a, a, a concern. I remember my my relatives in Japan being so impressed when they took me and my brother to like the grocery store, and they're like, "Oh, get pick an ice cream," and we we just picked one ice cream, and we're like, "We want this one," and we're gonna share it. And they're like, "No, you can pick another one." Like, "No, no, we just want because that's what we were so used to, just sharing." Um, and uh, yeah, anyway, that's a, that's a little bit about that. What and else should we go into? I I think that it's a blessing to come from a family who work their way from the roots up you know because of the perspective that comes from that you know we learn so much mm -hmm. as well as just a deep appreciation and gratitude for what we do have and not taking it for granted and um i think it's a beautiful thing that's part of what's led to our frugality mm -hmm. in our lifestyle choices um where sometimes we don't perhaps need to be but we choose to be because we feel it is the more responsible healthier way to handle certain things you yeah. know like why spend when we don't need to yeah and i feel like those are beautiful lessons we learned from our families growing up you know and and they they all did well for us too we grew up and had a wonderful life yeah and it, and it definitely gave us this hunger to want to be financially successful uh, yeah. and succeed and i think that's that's a huge driver for why we are where we are I think we still have to work at, or at least I still have to work at balancing, you know, that, that scarcism with, um, you know, just what makes sense. And, you know, there's some things that it's, it pays to be frugal with. And then some things that we just have to be a little more lenient in, in our spending. <laughs> I think we do a fairly good job, though. And we've we been do. getting better throughout the years. For I, sure. I was always someone who's like, only shop at the dollar store, just the dollar store. Everything in the dollar store is all I ever need. And then I met Sonny and he's like, you can buy a good used pair of something for more than what the dollar store thing is, but it will also last you a whole lot longer. Right. You know, and just the idea of like, okay, maybe certain name brand things are better quality and perhaps that is where I should buy it. So I don't have to get 10 of the dollar store version right. that break a week later <laughs> right like those walmart shoes that last like a month and then you've had like your nikes for like three years <laughs> five years <laughs> five years um so things like that yeah and but you know like i bought most of my shoes used and they still last like m many years after right, right um yeah so you can still be thrifty um and not the difference between being thrifty Versus being cheap. <laughs> right. Um, I was a very shy kid growing up. And I have my eighth grade yearbook. I should have brought it out for this podcast. Um, 
but in in the eighth grade and under shyest kid category is my face um i just didn't what a speak. label <laughs> what a label right um, would they do that anymore i don't think so <laughs> i wonder they might there's all those superlatives class clown and things like that yeah. so i was a shy one i was pretty good at sports but yeah i just did not i was very to myself you know i had uh one good friend growing up me and my brother had this good friend minjo if you're listening minjo thanks for being a good friend um and that was kind of enough for me i just needed that one good friend and we'd always hang out every day after school um and uh yeah yeah things are a little different now i'm definitely more outspoken but definitely still i'm a very introverted person a lot of my thoughts i keep to myself and only share if i feel like it's adding value to whom i'm whom i'm around i remember when i first met sunny he didn't say a word to me the first day I met him and the second time I met him he said like one sentence to me and that was it and we were skiing like all day long and I was just like who is this person who says nothing but just thinks a whole lot of things I feel like since that time you've become a whole lot more um expressive or outspoken like even just the idea of doing a podcast for someone who is naturally disposed to keep to themselves and and be quiet is a huge thing you know and over the years like you've done toastmasters you've done presentations you've done youth leadership and a lot of these things require getting up in front of crowds or people or friends and speaking right and I'm just so impressed because I did see a bit of that quiet, reserved person when I first met you and now how you are a lot more free in speaking. And I think that's an incredible thing that you're able to open up. Right. Well, I'm very, I mean, to you, you know, I'm sharing ideas and we're always, we're making our life together. So with you, it's definitely comes natural, I feel like, but um yeah, I, it's definitely been a growing experience. I still remember in seventh grade having to public speak for the first time, my hand shaking with that paper, like oh, <laughs> almost <laughs> fainting and, you know, just cold sweats. And uh, yeah, definitely been growth since then. Um, so why did you choose to work on that part of yourself? Well, I felt like, you know, being introverted and always thinking, I felt like I had all these awesome ideas in my head. And if I could find a way to overcome this shyness and be able to share these ideas with the world, it would have an impact. I really felt that. And I, I do. I feel like I'm having, we're having an impact by having this podcast. We're changing the world by the, by the people who listen and gain value and, change, and take action and change their lives from it. So I feel like that was a huge motivating factor. You know, and when, I was, when I was little, I felt like, oh, these are good ideas. I wish I could, I had the ability to share them with people. Um, I love how you have that healthy level of self-confidence. So you're like, my ideas are great. <laughs> yeah, I felt, and I felt like I was a very smart little kid too. Like I remember like tricking my third grade teacher when I was little. I forget what, what, what it was, but like I left like a sticky note or something on my, my friend's um table you know we had like four person tables or whatever and it was like sonny burns stole your <laughs> eraser and i put the sticky note and then he like told on me to the teacher and was like hey there's a note that says and my eraser's gone and it says sonny burns did it and the teacher's like he wouldn't have written that himself he couldn't have stolen that and i'm like i got one on that teacher <laughs> Oh, man. Great but, uh, ideas to share with the world, eh? Great ideas. That's where it all stems from. And, and then uh, from that day, oh. I was like, okay, you make a note to yourself that kids are smart. You know, don't let them get away with uh, pulling the, the wool over your <laughs> eyes because they are as smart as adults. And I still believe that, you know, little kids, maybe they don't have the experience we do, but they have that mental thinkers. process to, uh, you know, pull one over on you and, <laughs> and don't don't think that they're dumb. They're not. Um, so, yeah, Valen, too. Oh, man, I'm, so, I'm glad I learned that lesson for how to raise Valen because you cannot pull one over Valen. His, man, he is sharp. The other night, um, he had snacks in his bed and <laughs> came in and he seemed all startled and he shoved them under his pillow. And I'm like, what you got there? It's like, oh, nothing. <laughs> I'm like, what's under your pillow? Oh, there's something under my pillow? I'm like, I just saw you put something under your pillow lift your pillow oh 
gee, there's snacks under my <laughs> pillow. I forgot they were there. I'm like, you know, that's a rule. You don't bring snacks into your bedroom because it'll bring bugs and we just brushed your teeth and all. Oh, we have that rule. I forgot. <laughs> like, we just discussed it tonight. <laughs> Anyway, it's interesting, the little tactics that little children try. It, it is. But honestly, it's a test of, of, of intellect. They're trying to see, like, well, I'm is this person I'm dealing with actually clever or not, you know? And where are my boundaries and so forth, you know? And so we had a whole discussion on that. Right. You know, a rule is a rule is a rule. Yeah, Valen will only ask que- certain questions to you and certain questions to me. If it's like being wild and dangerous, he'll ask me. If it's getting away with like sugary snacks and candy, he'll ask you. Yeah, so now we're like, did you ask daddy? Did you ask mommy? <laughs> no? Well, you better go ask them. And then you let me know what they say, and then we'll talk about it. Right, right. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, back to the point here. We're talking about mis- mischievous things. Um, but, you know, to the other point of that, you know, if you have good ideas, you know, being able to share them is so huge, you know, um, to inspire others, to make a difference, to encourage growth and potential in others. And so if you're, you know, a shy person, sometimes trying to work at that and overcome it can really do you a service in your life because you can, you can make such a big impact when working on that. For me as a kid, I was never an introvert. I was always extroverted. I never had problems talking to people. So I can't really relate to the the shyness factor, but I feel like a lot of people can, you know, and it is a big it is a big challenge to overcome. It is. It is. It's hard. It was yeah. So it was something you had to really work at and honestly, I think you're doing a great job. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I feel like with time, I just got more comfortable in my own skin. Uh, better self-image you know and, and when I was younger I had such a like a uh, concept that I didn't want people to know that I was trying like I I was I don't know I had I had like interest in like working out and doing push-ups but I didn't want anyone to see me you know as a fat little kid doing push-ups being like oh he's trying too hard or I don't know I had that concept even as a little kid and you know slowly I was able to let that go over time and you know be more uh, confident in who I was and where I wanted to be. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that brought together confidence and just, you know, slowly taking on more roles as a, as a leader, you know, in youth ministry, talking to little kids and then, you know, going up there and sharing my story and giving testimonies and just, you know, ramping that up uh, throughout the years and just, just challenging myself, you know, not being okay with um, where I was. I think what you just brought out was a huge point which is you know overcoming that threshold of worrying about what other people's perceptions are of you Mm -hmm. and focusing inward what do you want to become Mm -hmm. who is the person inside that you want to be and just making that your goal regardless of what other people think of what you're doing you know just working at it and the diligence and the discipline will lead you to the goal and the objective and then you know you will be more satisfied with who you are as a person as well right so from this point we have to pivot where are we going okay so i have a list of fun and impressive facts by the way if you want a bio uh and you want to read my written bio my life purpose statement and my fun impressive facts uh you can go to <laughs> fanvestor.com resources and one of the second links i think is my bio so you can check that out um and uh, I, I don't know. I like my impressive facts. Shall I read some of them for you? Sure. You can read them for me. Sonny Burns has never paid for a haircut or a cup of coffee. Mm-hmm. Because he doesn't drink coffee and I cut his hair. <laughs> I should also add never paid for alcohol. That is a huge savings. Mm-hmm. I'm sure like a person my age, you know, I'm 30. What is, I, I, I'm interested in that statistic. I'm <laughs> sure it's, you know, like well over 5,000, maybe 10,000 they've spent on alcohol, tips on alcohol, all it's that. It's expensive. Yeah, especially if you if you had in like coffee, haircut. I've done the haircut calculation. I think I've saved like 15,000 at this point. Yeah. Uh, like if I was to get like a monthly haircut. Um, that includes like what I've saved my parents. Um, 
but yeah. I've only actually been to a barbershop once, and that was in Japan. My grandmother took me to a barbershop. Um, but you didn't pay. I, I didn't pay. <laughs> I did not pay. You were treated. <laughs> yeah, my mom started cutting my hair. My mom was cutting my hair, and then suddenly started learned how to cut my hair. Um, yeah. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. A little statistic there. Um, he makes a six-figure salary and six figures passively. So six figures at my W-2 job and six figures from the rental property. He has sold over $80,000 in pacifiers on Amazon. Why didn't you read the other one there? Uh, I don't know. He has <laughs> flipped 19 cards. Oh, you skipped it again. To pay for his two years, to pay for two of his years in college. Right, yeah. Freshman year. Actually, I started in high school. Well, did I? Yeah, I bought my motorcycle in high school. Uh for easy, quick transportation that was cheap because, you know, you get 50 miles per gallon and also insurance for an 18-year-old in New Jersey or a 17-year-old in New Jersey was like $2,000 a year just for liability. But if I got a motorcycle, it was only $300 a year, so much more affordable. So that's why I got a motorcycle at 17. But, I, but you know, I scoured Craigslist for like a couple of weeks and I found the motorcycle I wanted. And, you know, I bought it a 2001 Kawasaki Ninja 500R for 2,500 bucks. And I knew, you know, I could just go tomorrow and list it on Craigslist. I bought it from Craigslist and I could list it and I could sell it for, you know, at least a thousand more than I bought it for. And I'm like, I can do this. I can do this with cars. You know, cars are more plentiful and available. So I made that plan and yeah, I think I told this story before. I think we had one episode on that, but yeah, right. he got into buying good deals and cleaning them up, making them nice, doing minor repairs, and then flipping them. Yep. Yeah. For so, the profit. And that's how I paid my. Uh, I still have to take out some loans, but I, that's how I paid my uh, first two years in college. Um, after that, Scrappy I got the smart and scholarship. Resourceful. Yep. <laughs> I love that. It's a very creative way to pay for college. Mm -hmm. I did tutoring, and I don't think I did as well. <laughs> with what I made my eight dollars an hour <laughs> yeah I, I mean there were cheap cars under two thousand dollars usually but I averaged a thousand dollars profit per car mm -hmm. so moving on with this list he received a full ride scholarship that also paid 25k a year um, extra just uh, to go to college for his last two years yeah Department of Defense smart scholarship I have a YouTube video on that just search Department of Defense uh, smart scholarship I think I'm the first one that comes up you know, so, another creative way to finance your college education, you right. know, scholarships. And that's not the only one, smart scholarship, but it's certainly a good one out there. But I'm sure there's other programs for other areas of study as well. And if you get creative and just really search them out. Right. And that's what kickstarted my investing career, really, uh, was I was able to, you know, start funding my Roth IRA with that $25,000 a year that I was getting. Um, and yeah, I think I opened up a brokerage account, but you know, I started buying stocks and learning about investing, uh, through that way. Right. Listeners, did you know that Sonny Burns loves ultimate Frisbee? Mm hmm It's his favorite sport. And in college, he went to it D3. It was. Oh, you are changing? Well, I think volleyball is now my favorite sport. You're getting old. That's getting why. Old. <laughs> you can't keep up with. <laughs> Maybe. You went to D3 Nationals for Ultimate Frisbee in college. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. he played on a club sport team in college. They were an awesome team, I got to say. He did really well. And, mm -hmm. um, yeah, we've played a lot of Ultimate Frisbee. I think we took too. third. We were, like, last seed out of, like, I don't know, 20 teams. And we took third place. That's pretty good. I should write that because that's even more impressive. <laughs> <laughs> um, he has only ever kissed one girl. Do you know who that girl is? That's that's you. <laughs> and an awesome, awesome honor at that. Yeah. 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 I mean, in our, uh, in our religion that we grew up with, it was very strongly encouraged, you know, just the importance of um, sexual purity. And, you know, we, we definitely a courtship environment was encouraged. And the only person I've ever courted, is that the right word, courted, mm -hmm. was Sunmer. So. Yeah. And, you know, we were just uh, a good match. And yeah. uh, things worked out. Yeah. And only getting better and better. Wouldn't Great you say? Great journey, yes. Wifey? Yes. Life only gets better with every passing year. I honestly can, I feel like I honestly can say that. Mm -hmm. Life gets only better with you. I agree. <laughs> uh, let's see. 
as newlyweds, we save 75,000 in two years by living at home. It was a crazy time. Nine adults and just one bathroom in a tiny little three bedroom house. Mm -hmm. But we made a couple closets and uh, did we make closets? We didn't make closets. No, I mean, uh, we took a, a small office room and a and a porch and turned those into bedrooms so mm -hmm. that everyone had a room. Anyway, it was fun times. Good, good early start to our relationship. Yeah. And I got to really know your family very well through that experience. I'm definitely really grateful for that perspective. Right. I'll read the other ones. We backpacked Europe with uh, each other and our six month old um, with nothing but carry on. So we didn't check anything. We just uh, took our backpacks and we were on the road for like three weeks. Yeah. That was a fun trip. That's impressive. Having a baby. Right. Um, you want me to skip that one too, don't you? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll skip it. We've climbed to the peak of Mount Fuji, and I've completed a full marathon. So I completed that two years ago, right before my ACL surgery. Um, and this year, I'm trying to complete a triathlon. I was trying to complete it last year on Olympic triathlon, which is like a mile swim, a 26-mile bike ride, and a six-mile run. Uh, but COVID canceled it. So this year, I'm all scheduled for it in September. So I'm excited. Um... You want me to skip that one too, don't you? Okay, fine. Uh, we've completed a seven-day fast together. Nothing but water and toothpaste <laughs> passed our lips for seven days. <laughs> just water. We weren't eating toothpaste, to be clear. <laughs> just We happen to brush our teeth every day, so he's like, well, we consume toothpaste. Yes. But yes, all we drank was water for a week, and it was a very interesting experience because it really... Also a religious tradition, which, which I... It was a great bonding experience, and all we would do when we met up was talk about food and what we were going to cook <laughs> at the end of the thing. We ended right. up cooking our Thanksgiving dinner. That was our... We didn't break our seven days because you had to break it slowly with, like, oatmeal and baby food. Gentle foods. But a week after, we were, like, Thanksgiving meal, and... Uh, and just yeah. the perspective of gratitude that comes from understanding, like, how much blessing you have in your life, that you don't have hunger that you have food plentifully available to you. I don't know, just a life perspective that comes from doing right. something like that. And just knowing that, you know, you skip a meal, you're going to be you're gonna okay. You're going to be okay. You skip the next 10 meals, you'll be fine. Right. Um, <laughs> and I think that's that gives you a lot of um, confidence, a lot of, yeah, I don't know. I think so you're I, not chasing a meal every three hours. Right, like, I'm going to die, I'm starving. No, you're really not. Yeah, and you can do great things. Without eating as frequently as you think. Right. He, so here's an interesting one. He has taken nothing but cold showers for the last two years. I don't get it. But <laughs> <laughs> it's still impressive. <laughs> Would you like to talk about that? I don't know. It's, again, <laughs> a discipline thing. and uh... Yes. Anyway, I still think it's pretty impressive. Um, Mind over body. That's that's what he's working at there, and uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, diligence and self discipline needed to do that. It's yeah. impressive. Those cold showers are quick. They're like my showers are, like three minutes. I'm done. <laughs> yes, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> um, Airbnb host to the only Japanese Airbnb in New Jersey. Right, we, we designed that, and it was a labor of love, a really cool project, and it's been doing really well, I think, really because well. of the uniqueness of the space we created. Right. brings in like 15000 a year. It's pretty sweet. But it's a really cool space, and I think a lot of people really enjoy that experience. Mm -hmm. They don't have to go all the way to Japan to experience a little yeah. bit of Japanese culture. Yeah, I think we did a great job. There's a video on YouTube. Just go to uh, YouTube and search... Japanese Airbnb fan investor, and you'll probably find it. So last fun fact he's got on his list here. He rents out his third car on Turo. Yet another crafty business plan. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and that's been going really well, too. Um, yeah, it's but, been an interesting venture. Yeah, it's rented pretty frequently. Especially it's not even, a fancy car, either. And we're not even close to like any major city It doesn't even have power windows. Anymore. Nope, roll-up <laughs> windows. Yeah. That's a good car. I honestly think like Valen might inherit that car. 
10 years from now. Oh, yeah. I'm sure it's going to still never had going. anything wrong with it. Never. It's strong, solid. But what I love about that is just the idea that, you know, if you happen to have an unneeded car in your driveway, you could be making money off of it, you or know? Or you could buy a cheap car. Maybe your relative is, you know, upgrading. You're like, hey, instead of trading that in, why don't you sell it to me for the trading value? And then start building up a fleet and gain your financial independence that way. Yeah, lots of creativity creative ways to go about it so that is what we have on sunny burns anything else we should go into um i have my master's in mechanical engineering so i i graduated stevenson technology in hoboken new jersey with both my bachelor's and master's at the same time back then they didn't charge you extra if you crammed in 10 extra courses throughout your four or five years um and if you if you took 10 graduate courses, they'd give you a master's. So I was like, oh, I'm going to do that so I don't have to pay for a master's later. <laughs> I was taking like 23 credit semesters sometimes, and it was crazy, but I'm glad I got that done. I yeah. never want to go back to school again. <laughs> well, you don't have to. And don't plan to. A <laughs> <laughs> um, few other things. He loves listening to podcasts and audiobooks. He's a big, avid reader, especially when it comes to audio listening. It's really mostly just audio. I mean, we read on our bedside table books. Um, it's I, it's hard once you have kids to sit down and find quiet time for reading a book. A I just, I about. always liked audio books from like grade school. I was mm. listening to audio books. Well, you can be doing other things while mm -hmm. still taking in the information. Mm -hmm. um, hiking, camping, micro adventures, barefoot running, volleyball, ultimate frisbee, all these great outdoorsy things. I should add bike packing, which I just did this past weekend. Your new discovered hobby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, we hope that this episode could shed a little more light on the personal side of Sunny Who Burns. Is Sunny Burns? Yes. I feel like there's more we should go into, but I'm not thinking of anything. So, listeners, if you have questions, if you would like to know things that I didn't mention, maybe you can do, well, we can do like a short follow-up after Sunry's episode <laughs> um, where she has to, we, we're going to grill her. So if you have questions on her too, get those in and we can start the grilling process. Yeah, but we just really felt like we wanted to open up and share a little bit more about who we are as people behind the scenes, behind the podcast, behind all the business savvy advice we like to give out on this show um we're just ordinary people with you know creative lifestyles and ideas just living our life to the best that we can right you know i really feel like the one reason we can do you know because I, I feel like we do a lot of weird things or a lot of cool things that most people don't do and I feel like one huge factor is we are not really a TV family. Mm. We don't have a, a regular old TV. Sometimes, yeah, we'll pull up the laptop and watch things, but... Um, we don't have cable. We don't have cable. Um, we've dedicated only uh, Friday, the uh, weekends, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday for TV time if we, if we want to do it. But you know, usually our movie night. we occupy that time with other things. Right, but I feel like because we don't waste two to three hours a day and we try to limit phone use to uh to media we're able to do a lot of these cool things like running a podcast or taking you know looking up cool family adventures to do or just letting our minds work about what creative ideas right. we want to set off on next i really feel like you know when you have empty space in your schedule and your lifetime lifestyle and you don't fill it with meaningless repetitive distractions zombifying passive input right which you get from entertainment but and you just start working on your dreams in those times yeah i feel like that's why we've had so much success um it's it's hard work it's so much easier just to stare at a screen and so there's many nights where we're just like i just want to watch tv but we've made the commitment you know monday night tuesday night wednesday thursday night we're not doing it um and then even friday night you're usually like no we gotta finish that project we gotta upload that podcast something comes up right but don't you feel like that's one of the biggest reasons we've been able to do as much as we do definitely yeah. i think just there's a lot of time that we're spending thinking proactively on what we want to do next and just tackling those projects because we don't have an easier alternative to fall back on. 
Right. <laughs> so, for you listeners, that is huge. That might help if you if you have dreams and things that you always wanted to tackle and can't find the time for. Maybe eliminate TV for a month and see what that does in your life. Perhaps it'll create some, you know, eye-opening new experiences. And with that, we want to wish you all Godspeed. <laughs>